Yeah, the gray alien is actually like that's one of my earlier works. I usually, <laughs> I, I mean, I like doing a uh, bifurcated ox, and I also like doing you know, amphibian. So Dan is a comic and he is also, he does a lot of service work on the podcast. We talk about his work with the unhoused, with the, mm -hmm. with the homeless population. And if you don't want to watch the episode uh, at this point, just uh, know uh, Trisha sets a car on fire in the middle of it. Uh, <laughs> I cried. And yeah, we just went over some real top classified government secrets in this podcast. So go ahead and listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Charmed Life podcast. I am your host, Trisha Carr. This episode is a part two of a recent episode I did. I had this conversation with my friend Dan Donahue, who is a stand up comedian, but also a meditator. And he is in this particular episode, we talk all about the service work that he's doing by helping people who are on the streets, people who are homeless and unhoused. And with that, I will let you enjoy this part two of my conversation with Dan Donahue. Something I remember in the 90s, there was apparently other, I think even other states were buying people, uh, on homeless folks, bus tickets to Santa Monica. Yeah. To, mm -hmm. And just basically with like, go here, take this bus ticket. The panhandling is really good there. And like yeah. just displacing, you know, from one area to another is, does absolutely nothing to help anybody. Yeah. Well, it's the difference between like momentary relief and systemic change. Yeah. And uh, this, this was something that was interesting to me throughout all this is when when the pandemic hit obviously like it hurt me like financially as it hurt everybody financially and having more time to meditate was really great mm -hmm. so it, it that was like a weird mix of it yeah. but then there was and i've always felt this until like a couple of months ago i always felt like there was something missing with my practice mm -hmm. i always felt like like meditating always felt really good and I felt like I was improving and like my mind was clear and clear and clear, but there was always something missing until I started doing like the other work mm -hmm. until I started to help. And like anyone can do it. There's all these like perceived barriers that we put up where it's like, I want to help the unhoused. Like I see them all the time, but I don't know how. And it's like, grab a couple waters, like get some snacks, have a conversation with them and like go out in a group and be safe and all that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I mean, it really is that easy, but you just have to get through this mental barrier people put in between themselves and service. And a lot of times that's also the bridge from you and happiness. Mm, some wise words there, friend. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to pause yes. there a moment. You're going to wear that, wear that wisdom there for a second. You want to laugh right. it away. <laughs> you can't, there you go. Looks good on you. Thank you so much. It is the bridge between you and and your. Uh, I forgot it. <laughs> no, that's you got it. You channeled it. I, you that, jazzed it up. That's it, good. So I was going to ask you, yeah, what can folk, what can people do? What's what are some tips? And you, you say first of all, like, grab a group and get some supplies and go engage. That's as simple as simple as that. Yeah, I, I mean that's that's like the big education is obviously huge mm -hmm. I, I would say again the groups to to follow and watch in terms of education are uh la street watch and ground game uh for people who are local to los angeles and then if you're anywhere else uh i would say there's um there's a helpers coalition in new york that you could follow but it, i mean there's a ton of grassroots organizations uh all over the place and and you can find them uh, i wish there was more compiled resources but i'm sure you could find them on the internet but yeah if if that none of that applies to you or you just don't have the time literally just grabbing some water grabbing some food like baby wipes are always in high demand. Mm -hmm. Socks are always in high demand. It costs little to nothing. Like it's what, instead of like swiping your card at, at a CVS and then giving money to an organization that may or may not be like, you know, substantial or viable, just take that money, buy a water and give it directly to someone. I see that as a much more direct chain of service. Mm, that's beautiful. I actually wrote down the names of those few places, the two LA ones and the New York one. We'll put the link in the description for people if that awesome. applies to you. And, you know, I mean, service is a part of like 12 step programs. And particularly, oh, yeah. you know, if you if you are feeling yourself disenfranchised, or if you are feeling 
lack and and it's not to say when I say feeling, I mean, that can be the literal reality. You know, if you're feeling, if you're experiencing lack and compromise in, in truth, that being of service, that direct frequency of activating service activates service to yourself. The universe then recognizes it and it magnetizes the universe serving you. That's how I see it yeah. to happen on the metaphysical plane. Damn, you just had to top my wisdom, didn't you? <laughs> you just had to. You just had to one up me wisdom wise. <laughs> Listen, every in the unified field of consciousness, all things are on equal planes. Yeah. Except wisdom is always a competition between you and the person you're on a podcast with, and it's important to keep that in mind. I, I that is that's definitely in the bylaws of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I shall be the wisest. <laughs> but no, it it is, <laughs> it is, it is like. It, it's a cycle too, and it, it it's a like a beautiful sort of like self perpetuating cycle where I think like spirituality really fires people up mm -hmm. to uh, act in service. But then when acting in service, if you don't have a spiritual backing, I think a lot of people experience burnout, which is something mm -hmm. that that has been talked about in every organization I've been a part oh, in, yeah. uh, every demonstration, every protest. There's always talk about burnout, and a lot of times my burnout comes from the feeling of you see some, like, kind of, you know, you, you directly witness and experience very, uh, like, traumatizing and very brutal acts of, like, force and violence when you're doing that sort of work over a certain amount of time. Yeah. And if if you do that and then you feel the feeling that everybody feels at some point, which is I am so small, mm -hmm. this problem is so big, how how can I possibly feel good doing this knowing that whatever contribution I make is going to be minuscule? And meditation, and like bringing yourself down from that headspace, what you're really doing is you're separating yourself from your action yeah. and you're, you're like putting a divider there and bringing that together and bringing it down to the ground and sort of focusing more on like, well, this is what I can do. And mm -hmm. all you can do is all you can do, which is like a complete platitude or whatever. But it is true and you feel it more when you do have that spiritual practice. So it's like spirituality gets you into service and then service will be sustained by your spirituality. Ah, oh, you did one up, man. Yes. <laughs> try Slam to, dunk. Try to go, <laughs> try to go out strong. <laughs> Yes. No, it's so true. And in, in all seriousness, yes, exactly. You you are it's um it's the dichotomy of um the inner experience and taking action upon it. Actually, what it reminds me of and this is what you had said earlier too about how you were having your spiritual practice, you're meditating and everything, but there was something missing and it was the action. It was the acting upon it. There is a channel whose name is Daryl Anka and he channels an, a being, an entity, an interdimensional called Bashar. And Bashar says that the the language of manifestation is physical action. So basically, yeah. the universe or God or source or whatever is going to give you the infilling of the energies and everything, but you're not going to get any more until that is actually acted upon and, and however you can act upon it in whatever way is possible for you. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's it's this thing that can happen with uh, spirituality mm -hmm. and uh, any sort of development of self-progress without action is you do sort of find yourself going further and further, it, it, almost like you're you're floating, like like you're you're getting further and further detached because it does it can become self-serving if you don't incorporate the real world. Now, a lot if your practice is is like good and consistent usually you will naturally find yourself flowing into the the action part and yeah. and that's a beautiful thing that i mean that's what happened with me and it's what happens with a lot of people but yeah it, it, there are there were points with me where i felt like i was in these kind of like uh i'll call it like like almost self like own like personal feedback loops where mm -hmm. it was like I was waking up, I was meditating, I was making myself food, I was going to work, I was going to bed, like, blah, 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 blah. And, like, there's no, you're building up all of this energy and then not letting it go into somewhere else. Right. And that's how you really have your practice, like, 
go both ways and seesaw in a really nice way. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have my husband and I, we have this in action with my with my best friend, Crystal, too. We have this phrase, uh, limes on the ground, uh, a story. I <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm so excited for this. I have no idea. What's going on. I have no idea, but I love it. it. I'm so, so in. So the limes on the ground, had, uh, it comes from I was uh, actually the context of it is a little funny. My husband and I were heading out of town for some reason. And we, we had like, I think we were driving too. And so we had to get in the car, but I was going to meditate first. And so I was meditating and I think I was meditating in my backyard. And I had in my meditation, I was sort of asking about manifestation or creating some kind of goal. You know what I mean? Like I wanted to have some new I wanted something new. I was asking to ma manifest something. So I was connecting with an, an elf, an elemental being. <laughs> His name is Franklin. Very cool. And he curses. He says the F word a lot. <laughs> nice. See, you knew you knew you knew you were into this story. Oh, before. I'm so into Franklin. <laughs> And anyway, so, you know, that's how I perceive this energy. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. like a kind of a wood elf or a tree elf or something. And he's got this like, you know, this energy about him is how I experience this sort of na nature spirit guide. And, um, you know, with nature spirits, because they're really in this fast plane, like this 2D, this dimension that is really proximate to creation. So to me, they can have a fast energy and even like a, you know, a cause and effect kind of energy about them, too. You know, right. some people say that fairies are mischievous and it's really just that they sometimes they don't have a lot of patience for humans that are walking around and destroying things on the planet. That's what I think right. it's like. It's like action reaction right away. Totally. Yes. Yeah. And so I'm meditating, asking for some kind of manifestation thing. And frankly, and I'm sitting out in my backyard and we have this beautiful key lime tree and the it was just like the tree was super pregnant and had dropped all of these limes and like the the ground was just covered with these really beautiful ripe key limes and franklin said to me how dare you ask for more when there are limes on the ground <laughs> oh that's nice <laughs> and it was like it was like a double entendre because he literally meant how do you just let nature give her bounty to you and you do nothing about it? He was saying literally pick up the limes, but also in your yeah. life, you've been given things and you haven't done enough with them. Like you have enough and you haven't taken action on them in direct alignment with the thing that I was asking for. And I was just like, like kind of like blew my mind. And I went in and I got some bags. And Brian's like, are you ready? And I was like, I have to pick up the limes on the ground. Franklin, the wood elf said so. And he was like, <laughs> Uh, okay, okay, honey. Um, all right, I'll help you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wasn't really sure. So we talk about that sometimes. It's like, oh man, there are limes on the ground. The reason something isn't happening for me is because there must be limes on the ground. Yeah, no, that that's a perfect, I mean, especially being in like a, a creative sort of uh, circle like I'm in, mm -hmm. it, there's these stories yeah. and they're so ubiquitous of people who are like, creative mm -hmm. and and they're in some sort of a job that is like art or music and you know you can so many of those people are very subject to substance abuse mm. because a lot of the times they're chasing it's like i only have so many hours in the day i have to create as much as i can how about i just try this like drug solution some pop a pill and write for longer and then that'll be my way of sustaining and it's like that can become such a dangerous game. Like, sure. like what you're saying, like when you keep asking for more and more and more and more, like you want more energy, you want more creativity, like blah, 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 blah. And the way that you can like get away from that is to be like, oh no, everything is already here. Yes. Gaining more energy isn't gonna help me become more creative because there is a point of diminishing return. Right. There's yes. like a lime, there's a lime cap, we'll call it. <laughs> There's a lime. There's a yes. cap on lime. That's it. Yeah. You're only going to be given so many limes. But it's so true. Now we're coming back again to presence. We're coming back to mindfulness and to get into the, what it is that you have now and where the benefit is, where where the gift already is. That's why gratitude yeah. practices are so powerful. They're powerful for manifestation because you're activating the frequency of being full and satisfied and, and wealthy yeah. even. Yeah, and just having an understanding of what's going on around you. Like, th this is an example. It's just very fresh in my mind because it happened yesterday. But uh, we were we were monitoring uh, a sweep, mm -hmm. and 
I mean, I, I won't get into the legal details, but basically there's a workaround with the city where they're able to do sweeps of encampments within designated areas, which is completely crazy to me during a pandemic that you would take something away from someone who's already living on the streets. Yeah. But there's they the police court off. There's probably, I mean, no, no exaggeration, 20 police officers for less than a 300 yard stretch of road. Oh, my God. And they're monitoring, and, and you have police officers that are watching where it's like, I mean, they're so conditioned to just kind of do what the law, oh, this is what the law says, we have to do it no matter how immoral or illogical it is. This is the law, we're going to do the law, blah, 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 blah. And then you have the sanitation people that are doing it. And the sanitation people, for the most part, are like destroying a tent and watching. And, and me watching from outside of the fence, outside of the police line, I just see this like, cycle of like uh, ignoring presence from mm -hmm. from both sides and how just ignoring what is going on in the moment isn't just neutral yeah. it can be so harmful yeah. because it was the the police officers being like well this is my day today i was told to do this and we're gonna and then the the sanitation people being like well we're not the police officers we're just doing our job they're just here to watch us and then looking at the result of that being some someone's entire belongings being thrown into a like garbage truck and drove driven away <sighs> and that's sort of where where it comes in because i i it's hard for me to say this, and maybe you have an opinion on it, but there there is a part of me where it, it's like maybe if both of those people from, like, a young age had a spiritual practice, they would be in a different place than where they were that day. Like, maybe they would have found a different mm -hmm. route. Maybe that wouldn't have happened. But I can't speak for that. What I can speak for is, like, my place in it and where I feel good is on the other side of that. And I think that if you really do want to make sure that you don't become – part of this like ignorant cycle of hate is to do a spiritual practice and then from there do what you think is right right and and you know if these people had a spiritual practice from an early age you know i think we could get into nature versus nurture because there are some people who have more near mirror neurons in their brains naturally yeah. and there are some people who have more or less of the frontal lobe and uh, however that it can anything can be nurtured and anyone can grow and the yeah, answer that, is nobody I, knows what, what the way it was said in the Bible. No one knows the heart of another man. And that's why I'm, I'm hesitant to say that. Yeah, I know. It's like, I think that some people for sure are just like, it would be hard to get through them no matter what the circumstances. But yeah, when, when you just see that in person, it makes you think like, what could in like our perfect world, if we were to make it, what could stop this from happening? And that's just one thing that crosses my mind. It's like, it's yeah. hard to conceptualize anything, but yeah, just, I guess more people following what they act in, like following that feeling in their gut and being like, this is just bad. Anyone mm -hmm. to see, like I, I caught video of it and I showed it and it's like, everybody was like, oh yeah, this is just bad. Right. Like, this should not be happening. And well, yeah, I, like just, I think just following that gut instinct is what would lead to things changing. Well, yeah, just if there's if there were 20 police officers there, if one said this, I, I'm going to follow my heart and I think this is cruel, you know, they could at least in that moment, maybe all 20 of them could protest. And then that would be a significant message to send to the system, you know? I, so, yeah, yeah or, I mean. Or just one, like, like, I mean, we've seen it during during the protests after George mm -hmm. Floyd. Like there were police officers in New York. I think it was like, over over five a day were turning in their badges and resigning because yeah. of like the moral dilemma that they experienced and it's like yeah I mean, I mean it's hard and i try to also not like pin it on individuals because it is all this part of the system of hurt that has been yeah. uh created over years and years and years and a lot of the times individuals like those sanitation workers and those police officers are part of this bigger game that's mm -hmm. being played. So I try not to direct all of my anger and frustration at individuals because that's also not the way to solve things. Yeah. But again, having that larger field of consciousness and perception, it's like I, I can't think of another way to get at that than like sitting down, finding like some inner peace and like really focusing on expanding your field of mm -hmm. understanding of these situations. I just taught a program with, with Crystal, my best friend, um, and we, there was one lesson 
that I presented, and it was on the rays, meaning like like the chakras, but it, mm-hmm. it's more expanded, different, slightly different perspective of the rays, and how each of the rays has obviously their positivity, but then if if you were to sort of accumulate even too much of that positivity, maybe like you were saying, without off-gassing it or without putting some activation to it, then it can become the shadow side of it. There's always two sides to everything. And, you know, like the uh, yellow ray, that's the identity center. And too much identity could be obviously something like narcissism, you know. In the heart, Mm -hmm. you'd think, well, the heart, it's the center of compassion. Nothing bad could happen with that. But if you accumulate too much compassion, that could actually be what you're saying. You know what I mean? You get the burnout. You are observing where things are not, because you are holding too much of it. And so what happens, the way that you can help to with this perspective of the rays is move up to the next highest ray, the next highest ray from the green, where the compassion is, if you've accumulated too much compassion, is the blue, which is about synthesis. So if you can synthesize and actually then express, then we're going to start to kind of take some kind of different action, right? Anyway, I just bring that up. No, that's, I mean, yeah, super well put. And it's the same thing as like, We see money as something that cannot be like, oh, money is always good. Like money is great. We can accumulate as much as possible. And it's like when channels of money grow out of proportion, it doesn't just corrupt the individual. The entire system goes completely awry, like as we see, Mm -hmm. because there's this over accumulation in this very specific part. So it's like in the same way our channels, it's like we think. Oh, like compassion is this like complete, and it is. I mean, like in its pure form, of sure. Course. Yes, but we, when it's not offset and balanced and channeled properly, yeah, it can become a huge, huge problem because then you just end up almost being paralyzed by feeling, which I'm sure all of us have been mm-hmm. at one point or another. And when I look back at those times, that I, like like I've had I've had like panic attacks and breakdowns and all that, and and it does feel like you're almost being paralyzed by your emotions. And whenever I look back and assess those situations, it's always become because there was something, some feeling that was just growing and festering that I wasn't addressing, and eventually it spills over. Yeah. If you're interested in seeing or hearing the part one of my conversation with Dan Donahue, you can scroll down into the description. You'll find the link to either watch it on YouTube or listen to it on the podcast. Thanks for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are. If you enjoyed this or any of the Charmed Life podcast episodes, I invite you to like, subscribe, share, or comment, or leave us a review on Apple iTunes or however you get your podcasts. Registration is open for the channeling intensive taught by myself, Trisha Carr, and Crystal Ann Compton. Now, this is a live, online, eight-week, immersive educational and experiential program. This program is designed for you to open your divine channel to higher consciousness, cosmic intelligences, and source energy. The 2020 Channeling Intensive begins the week of October 11th. This is an innovative and groundbreaking intensive designed specifically to connect you to spirit so you can draw down potent, useful, and transformative energy. If you've never been in a program like this, I encourage you to check it out. Now, this program is for intermediate to advanced students, and what we mean by that is students who are not afraid of the world of spirit and those who already know how to meditate or have a meditation practice. We will meet live and online for education and group coaching over the course of the eight weeks. Expect your life to change drastically as new information, energy, revelations, and love pours into you, through you, and by way of spiritual channeling. I encourage you to go to the information page to read all about this eight-week course and also to find frequently asked questions. Now you can click the link in this description or you can go to learn.lightworkerslab.com slash 
2020 CI. If you're interested in metaphysical concepts such as frequency states, dimensions, densities, cosmic guides, and how to practically implement this knowledge into your life, and if you are seeking a community of like-hearted healers and believers in love, then check out the Channeling Intensive. Crystal and I are excited to meet you and to work with you. Thank you.